Good day everyone, I'm Teacher Nick and today we are going to discuss the different computer peripheral devices. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the functions of the different input and output peripheral devices of a computer system. You will also appreciate the importance of these devices in your daily lives. And you will be able to enumerate the different input and output devices of a computer system. Before we start with a new lesson for today, let us just have a quick review of the things that we have learned the last time. Can you remember what our previous lesson was? Very good! We had a quick introduction to computer. Also, we discussed its basic parts and its basic types. Now, how do we define a computer again? Very good! A computer is an electronic device that is capable of accepting, sorting, processing, and outputting data. Now, can anyone remember the two basic parts of the computer? Right! We have the hardware, which is the physical element of the computer, and the software, which refers to the computer programs. Will you be able to enumerate the different types of computers? If you answered one of these, then you are correct. It's good to know that you seem to be able to have a full grasp of our previous lesson. To kickstart our class, I am going to give you a preliminary activity. Please get a pen and a piece of paper. I am supposing that all of you are well aware of your body parts, right? Now, in your paper, I want you to list down as many external body parts as you can. External meaning the parts which you can see physically like your hands. You only have one minute to do this activity. Are you ready? Okay, the timer starts now. Now, look at your list again. You might probably listed one of these, right? That activity that you have just done is somewhat related to our new topic for today. Like the human body, the computer system has different components and peripherals which work together so it can function well. Today, we are going to discuss the different input and output devices that are being used to fully automate a computer system. Now, do you have any idea what an input device is? How about an output device? Input devices are devices that we use that accept data and instructions from the user or from another computer system, while output devices are any piece of computer hardware that displays or show results after the computer has processed the input data that has been entered. Let us first tackle input devices. There are two types of input devices. The first one is used to enter or input data using this device. Do you know what this device is? Yes, very good. This is a keyboard. It is a piece of computer hardware used to input text, characters, and other commands into a computer or similar device. So that's the first type of input devices, the keyboard entry, which means we input data to the computer via the keyboard. The second type of input devices is what we call direct entry devices. These input devices are forms of input which does not require data to be keyed by someone sitting at a keyboard. These devices create machine-readable data on paper, magnetic media, or feed it directly into the computer's CPU. 
we have three categories of direct entry devices. Do you know what these are? Direct entry devices are categorized as pointing devices, scanning devices, and voice input devices. Now, what are pointing devices? These are input devices used to move the pointer or the cursor on screen. Can anybody give me an example of a pointing device? Did I hear you say mouse? Very good! A mouse is the most common pointing device used in PCs. Why do you think it's called a mouse? That is correct, because it physically resembles a mouse or a rat. A computer mouse is a handheld hardware input device that controls a cursor in a GUI or a graphical user interface and can move and select text, icons, files, and folders on your computer. Mice come in different types. This is one of those types. Can you guess what type of mouse this is? Yes, very good. This is an optical mouse. It is a computer mouse which uses a light source, typically a light emitting diode and a light detector, such as an array of photodiodes to detect movement relative to a surface. This is what we commonly use in the computer systems today. Another type that is popularly used nowadays is the wireless mouse. It connects to a computer without the use of wires. Instead, the mouse uses some manner of wireless technology like Bluetooth, RF, or infrared radio waves. Usually, a USB receiver is plugged into the computer and receives signals from the cordless mouse. The third one is the mechanical mouse. It is used to be the only type of computer mouse back then. It harbors a hard rubber ball within that translates its movements along a surface into information, which is then sent to the desktop and allows you to move the cursor around as you please. This is the old type of mouse that people use. We also have the trackball mouse, which looks a lot like a mechanical mouse placed upside down with the ball facing upwards, that you'd move manually with your thumb or index finger. Now, aside from the mouse, which is the most commonly used, what other pointing devices can you think of? Very good! A touch screen can also be considered as a pointing device. It is a display screen that is sensitive to the touch of a finger or a stylus. Touch screen has become very popular for smartphones, tablets, laptops, and monitors. This also has a lot of other applications like in ADMs, retail point-of-sale terminals, industrial controls, and car navigations. Another example is a digitizer tablet, which is also called the graphics tablet. It is a graphics drawing tablet used for sketching new images or tracing old ones. The user contacts the surface of the device with a wired or wireless pen or puck. So there you go. Those are the different examples of pointing devices. The mouse, the touchscreen, and the graphics tablet. We will now move on to the scanning devices. These are devices that can read text or illustrations printed on paper and translate the information into a form the computer can use. Can you think of an example of a scanning device? Yes, definitely. A scanner or an image scanner is the most popular example. It is a device that optically scans images, printed texts, handwriting, or an object, and converts it to a digital image. Commonly used in offices are variations of the desktop flatbed scanner, where the document is placed on a glass window for scanning. Another example is a barcode reader or a barcode scanner. It is an optical scanner that can read printed barcodes, decode the data contained in the barcode, and send the data to a computer. Like a flatbed scanner, it consists of a light source, a lens, and a light sensor translating for optical impulses into electrical signals. So those are the scanning devices, the image scanner and the barcode scanner. Next up are voice input devices. These are audio input devices which are also known as speech or voice recognition systems that allow users to send audio signals to a computer for processing, recording, and carrying out commands. Can you give me an example of a voice input device? Did I hear microphone? You are right. A microphone is the most popular example of this device. 
which allows users to speak to the computer in order to record a voice message or navigate software. Those are the three categories of the direct entry devices, which falls under the input devices. Pointing devices, scanning devices, and voice input devices. Now, we will move on and tackle output devices. Earlier, we have defined output devices as any piece of computer hardware that displays or show results after the computer has processed the input data that has been entered. Can you identify what output device this is? What do you call this one? Yes, very good. This is a monitor. A monitor or a computer display monitor is an example of an output device. It displays information in visual form using text and graphics. The portion that displays the information is what you call the screen or the video display terminal. Now, there are different types of monitors. There's the LCD, the LED, and the CRT. Let us tackle them one by one. LED monitors are the most common type of monitors that we see nowadays. LED means light emitting diode. It is a display and lighting technology used in almost every electrical product on the market these days. We also have LCD monitors. LCD means liquid crystal display. This technology has been used in laptops for some time. Right now, it has been commercially available as monitors for desktop PCs. Before the LED and LCD monitors came out, we have the CRT monitors, which was popular back in the day. CRT means cathode ray tubes. These were the only type of displays that was used with desktop PCs. They are relatively big, around 14 inches to 16 inches deep, and can weigh over 15 pounds. Another example of an output device is this device. Are you familiar with this one? What do you call this? Very good. This is an LCD projector. It is a type of video projector for displaying video, images, or computer data on the screen, or other flat surfaces. It is a modern equivalent of the slide projector or overhead projector. How about the speaker? Can it be considered as an output device? How do you say so? Very good. Output devices can not only produce what we can see, but also what we can hear. A speaker is used to play sound. They may be built into the system unit or connected with cables. These devices allow us to listen and hear sounds from our computers. Now, can a printer be considered as an output device as well? Yes, you're right. A printer is also an example of an output device. It is a device that prints paper documents which includes text documents, images, or a combination of both. There are different types of printers. Let us learn them one by one. First is the inkjet or the bubble jet printer. It sprays ink at a sheet of paper. It produces high quality text and graphics. Second are laser printers. It uses the same technology as copy machines and they also produce very high quality text and graphics. Another type is similar to the laser printer. They are called LCD or LED printers. The only difference is that they use liquid crystals or light emitting diodes rather than a laser to produce an image on the drum. We also have line printers which contains a chain of characters or pins that print the entire line at one time. These are very fast, but produce low quality print. Thermal printers can also be considered as one type. These are inexpensive printers that work by pushing heated pins against heat sensitive paper. These are normally used in calculator and fax machines. We also have large format printers. These are printers that print on large paper, which can range from two or more than 15 feet in width it typically uses inkjet technology to print on a variety of output, including premium glossy coated paper for signs and posters. We also have sophisticated printers like the 3D printers. A 3D printer is a computer-aided manufacturing or CAM device that creates three-dimensional objects. Like a traditional printer, a 3D printer receives digital data from a computer as input. However, instead of printing the output on paper, a 3D printer builds a three-dimensional model out of a custom material. So there you go, those are the different output devices. The monitor, the LCD projector, the speaker, and the printer among others. Now, let's have an activity. 
I will show you a video clip that presents the input and output hardware peripherals of a computer. After watching the video, you should be able to answer these questions. So now, let's have a recap of the things that we have learned today. What are the two major types of hardware devices? Can you delineate the difference between input and output devices? Now, can you give me an example of an input device? How about examples of output devices? I will give you another activity. Please get a pen and a piece of paper and draw a diagram like this. The middle is labeled as computer system. There are the different devices that we have learned today in the blank circles provided around. After that, label each if it is an input or output device. Put an arrow going in the system to signify it is an input device, and an arrow directing out to signify it's an output device. Now, after learning our topic today, do you think the computer system will function well without its input and output devices? Each device has its own importance and purpose in a computer system. I hope that you realized that they are like parts of our body. When a part went missing or malfunction, the body will not function as it should. Also in real life, a community or society is important to an individual to properly function as a human being. Get a piece of paper and write down your answers for the following questions. We will be discussing a new topic next time. I have here a few questions for you to answer that will serve as your assignment. That will be all for today. I hope you learned something from the topic that we discussed. We will learn another topic when I see you again next time. Always remember, you should develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Again, this is Teacher Nick. Goodbye!